Hi everyone, it's Olga Zar from SEO Sly. This is SEO podcast by SEO Sly. Today I have two guests, not just one. This is Rafał and Radek. Um, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit. They have already been my guest in the past. Uh, they are also from Poland and I think they are doing great things in SEO. Not only so, can you briefly tell a word about yourself? SEO Sly. SEO done right. I'm Olga Zar, an SEO consultant in SEO since 2012. Don't forget to subscribe to learn SEO for free with me. Now let's get into the show. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raf. Um, I've worked in SEO for so many years. Uh, I can't remember how many. Um, I'm a co-founder of Husky Hamster, a non-agency. So we do um, international link building and international and investor uh, programmatic SEO projects. And we have a Rad um, with us, co-founder as well. Hi, yeah. Rad. Hey, everyone. It's Rad here. Um, yeah, I, I think I also don't remember how many years I've, I've been in SEO, but it rings about around 14, I think. And um, yeah, I'm the CTO at the company, and uh, I'm also at the moment mainly leading the investors' projects and overseeing some of the more difficult SEO campaigns. So okay, exciting cool. The easy ones are for me. <laughs> <laughs> the easy ones are for for people who can deal who are cheaper. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, so so today I think we want to talk about a little bit controversial and very popular topic like everyone is talking about right now, which is the apocalypse of SEO, which is coming, like SEO is dying and our jobs will probably stop exist very soon. And how do we prepare for that? So we wanted to share our insights on that topic and, and offer you how we approach it, some of the tips we have, and generally like rant a little bit about that because this is a nice topic to talk about so rad maybe we can start with you how do you see the seo apocalypse like what's going on like how do we protect ourselves well i i'm just hoping it's not going to be a ranting episode <laughs> where three <laughs> seos met and are just complaining about about we'll what, see what's how it evolves in the world uh, <laughs> Well, I got to say, I don't complain that much. Um, although er, just earlier today, I saw an article on Search Engine Journal um, with, with titled something around, is AI going to take over all SEO work? <laughs> yeah. So I think, you, as you rightly said, it's a very uh, popular subject at the moment. I personally don't worry about none of it uh, because <laughs> my other um, love uh, business-wise and career-wise is programming. So I think I'm going to be good oh. <laughs> even if AI truly takes over uh, all the SEO work. Although who knows, maybe it's going to take over dev work also. Yeah, this is what um, I wanted to say. I think developers <laughs> are the next, like after SEOs to be taken down by AI. So so what are yeah, you going well, to do? You know, looking at at both of these from, from at least my experience, I think developers actually have a little bit more to worry about because especially those ones that are just writing the code because if you look at seo at a broader scale seo is many more things than just you know writing content or churning out pages or or doing some some code like developers do seo you know marketing in general is a lot that involves data analysis and as much as i think uh, machines will be good in data analysis they will not be that great to figure out what data and from what sources pull it not at least for a little while um at least it's my hope they won't be <laughs> maybe let's put it for the next time. week yeah yeah uh, for yeah for the next week and the next week we're gonna see <laughs> that uh, llms are now connecting to all the tools and figuring everything out yeah uh no i think 
this is kind of like as, as much as we have SEO courses and and a lot of materials online, some SOPs or some things that we do are uh, based a lot on experience. And it's difficult to teach machines experience where there isn't that much information about that because everyone has their kind of like their own way uh, to go about things. But hey, I I just hope I'm not going to be proven wrong. What do you think, Raf? <laughs> yeah, tell us. <laughs> right. Um, well, that's a difficult one. Um, do, do we have and... jobs? No, in two years. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I think oh, you're good much SEOs. more pessimistic than I am, Olga. <laughs> uh, uh, right. No, I think to be completely honest, um, I think we're gonna be good. I mean, especially good SEOs. Like, because you know, if if you if you know your way around Google, if you know your way around machines and uh, and and a bit of code, and then you obviously need to know a lot about marketing, about the digital world altogether right and as seo might be dying when you think about it from the very like old-fashioned so-called perspective uh, which is based only on content and whoever has more articles is ranking higher right um if you think about it that way then yeah you might probably be jobless soon but if you you've got a little bit more experience or at, le at least willingness to learn a, li a little bit more and you you, you get it into you know, um, SEO um, from the perspective of uh, SEO being a marketing channel, a very complex, very sophisticated and very diverse marketing channel where you need to understand the audience and you need to understand those little things that behind this, uh, then I think you're safe. I mean, everyone who really uh, understands uh, how SEO works, how marketing works and what SEO is for, then it's safe. But if you don't, then it might be a problem because simple SEO optimizations, um, content production, any content, you know, video, whatever, um, images, uh, it, that, that will be replaced. And basic optimizations on it, that will be replaced too uh, by machines. It already is, but it's going yeah. to be even faster than now because those machines are learning very fast. I mean, it sounds like, you know, a Terminator or something. Um, um, but yeah, machines are taking over. So uh, brace yourselves. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But um, for real, um, like if you know what you're doing, then you're gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. I just, I just wanted to say that regarding basic optimization, I'm not sure if I may have misread it, but I've been looking at the recently changed Google Starter Guide for website owners. And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if if you've seen it, but I think I read something that where Google said that, well, optimization, technical optimization isn't as important as it used to be because al the algorithm is very well versed in figuring out some small mistakes. So just a normal website owner doesn't really have to worry about it that much. Uh, I don't know if this this is something I may be misinterpreted, but I think it was, it said something. Yeah, I think it was that. in the section about the silos, creating silos, right? Because I read the updated version and I think they said that it is good to have a good structure, especially if you have a huge site, but you shouldn't like change everything now because Google understands, probably understands well your site. So I'm not sure if this was about that, but with technical SEO, I, I I think this is what they meant. As long as you make your site crawlable and indexable, right? Which is like kind of at least now the basis. <laughs> yeah. So isn't this exactly what what Rafael said in in terms of Google being smart enough to figure out those sh sheer basics? And you know, we still have to obviously make sure, as you said, Olga, it's crawlable and indexable. And it makes sense for the bot. Uh, but I think, yeah, well, I, I don't think I don't think we're going to be out of the job. It, I think it's just the job is kind of leveling up a little bit and it's going to operate at a slightly higher abstraction layer. 
Yeah, so assuming that the main search engine doesn't change, maybe it will be slightly like different because we, we will have maybe SGE like on a regular basis with every or almost every query we make. But assuming this stays the same, then I am pretty optimistic that yes, the smart SEOs will be there. We'll just have to learn new things, observe new things, use AIs in ways to make our work more productive. Because like even for data analysis, like the thing I did with ChatGPT today, code interpreter, analyzing data from GSC and GA took me like, I don't know, it took me 15 minutes maybe. In the past, it took me a couple of hours or even more. So if we know how to leverage those tools to become more productive, this is this will be, I think, an opportunity even for us to grow as, an, as, as SEOs to become better. But what if uh, the search engine landscape changes completely and we don't have Google or Google evolves into, I don't know, some AI chat, maybe Bart will be there, just Bart, or we'll only have this chat interface or whatever. What what we do then if like the search engines in the way we know know them now are gone in, let's say, I don't know, three years, five years, <laughs> there will be AI optimization I don't know. I, 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 I know my way around gardening, so, so, so I can I can do garden. So, I I could let's coin another term: search artificial intelligence optimization. <laughs> the, the the abbreviation uh -huh. is a bit bad, but <laughs> yeah, S A I O or A I O. I, I heard A I O somewhere. <laughs> so what <laughs> do we do then? Like, <laughs> well. I, my opinion is that we always adapt. We have adapted since, you know, SEO existed, essentially. Right. And Google has seen huge shakedowns in terms of the innovation that was applied to the algorithm. Uh, not as much in terms of how the whole search interface behaves, but I think in the end, what is it about? It's about ranking something, giving users lists, giving users some diversity in the results. So, you know, if we've been able to figure out SEO for 20 plus years, how to rank in the, you know, top, the 10 blue links, yeah. as it used to be called and still sometimes is, although there's no more 10 blue links and uh, on, on their own. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we're going to adapt to that somehow. We're going to figure it out. We'll, we'll have to. Um, and lastly, sorry, because I'm taking time for Rafael. Please, please uh, do. Of course. <laughs> lastly, <laughs> time. essentially, websites need to evolve into being better for the user and as seos this has been our job for a bit now for at least a few years and if seos if so, any of your seos listening to this we're focusing on just content links and you know some little fixes then they're, they've been focusing probably on the on the wrong stuff uh because you gotta focus focus on the user first and so you know there will be always work to optimize stuff it's just figuring out it's just about figuring out what and how to optimize it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Raf, your take yeah my take would be mm, i don't believe in such a drastic change that will affect in seos actually losing the work well mainly because even though that google changes frequently um, and quickly um, there's always change towards users right and if you observe, observe the past, if you analyze the past, this is exactly what was happening. And as Rad said, we were as SEOs always adjusting. And what has happened that SEO is be became more and more sophisticated with every single update, with every single year. And we started charging more for our work because we had to understand more. We had to understand different tools, right? The, the, the spectrum of analysis got broader and broader, right? Um, so whatever Bard or whatever Greg or whatever they figure out later, um, I think, you know, 
with our expertise and, and understanding of digital landscape, um, I think it's going to be benefit for SEOs, to be honest, really, I, I really, I can't wait for it. I mean, because I, I look at SEO from the perspective of like, Hey, this is one of the tools, right? This is one of the tools that we're supposed to be using to, you know, I wanted to say to make search better, but no, that's not my job uh, <laughs> to, to rank our clients, to make them money or to make money on our own projects. Right? So it might happen that for certain, uh, for certain types, uh, for certain topics, for certain types of websites seo as we understand it today might not be the best and the only option option anymore uh because you've so for mentioned sg uh right it could be right but there are a lot of other things that we can use um and we can put our skills into use to to, to make our clients money or make money for our own projects so it, it, it's a big unknown um in a sense yeah but from the other hand i i, I don't feel um that you know, that's going to be a major problem uh, mm -hmm. for for experience, experience SEOs. But I need to mention that obviously, if someone is starting in SEO now, mm, and you might not be able to gather a lot of expertise uh, quickly, um, and do not is not able to run a lot of tests, uh, it might get even a bit of a trouble when Google actually deploys SG and everyone follows and it's going to be a bit of a mess for a while. Right. But yeah. <clears throat> so what I would suggest here, and I always do when I speak with someone younger, which is not really difficult because it seems like everyone, everyone's younger now than me, but anyway, <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> to all those youngsters out there, uh, just again, think about SEO as a tool, right? So this is not about keywords anymore. This is not about single headings, right? Or, or some scheme optimizations anymore on a single pages. I mean, do all the things, but think about it from the perspective of the user again. So, you know, for if you run a project for a B2B uh, company, for example, you, you need to understand who is behind the query. You need to understand their funnel. You need to understand who, if you're writing or creating content or ordering the content, whatever, or reorganizing the content even, you need to understand to whom this content speaks to, right? Whether that person who reads that content, who finds that content, whatever, whether it's going to click through and, you know, it's going to be a, a successful lead, right? So it requires a lot more analytical thinking and analyzing competitors and the landscape in general. So you can charge more because you will deliver better results. And AI, as you both said, helps, right? Because A-B testing, for example, on content, right? For specific queries and pages, was super difficult. It's hard to, you know, even if you wanted like, 100 words content or whatever different images you had to go through entire process of ordering paying for it testing that takes ages now you can test and replace very quickly because of the ai and i think that's going to be progressing you will be able to get generate and create better content um and you can you know test your lead generation for example a lot a lot more often to find the best uh, of the best so we are good yeah. i think yeah, yeah, I like this op op optimistic approach and I like to believe that this is actually like how it is going to, to be. But what you talked about is more about when you already have the traffic and what you do next to kind of get the ROI mm -hmm. from SEO. But I want to talk about this stage of actually getting the traffic and I still believe that SEO fundamentals in many cases, in most cases, because I audit a lot of sites, most sites do not have the SEO fundamentals in place. So they do not even get into this. They don't do not if they do not even can get a chance to get into this game of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Basic as and, and and I think uh, in this uh, document, um, uh, recently updated, started SEO guide. Uh, there was a lot about that and uh, Google was also like talking about uh, some myths there are. I don't agree with all of the, all of the things that Google said there, but one thing that I always um, emphasize and want everyone to do is to have their, their list of all their canonical pages, indexable pages and map 
one single like target keyword, I still kind of think in terms of keywords to that page, of course, this keyword will have a lot of variations, synonyms, blah, blah, blah. But if you have that and you actually have all the SEO fundamentals tuned for that keyword for on, the, on this every page, then you actually can get into the SEO game. And this is still, even though we're talking about AI doing all those magic magic things with AI, those tools that can rank us, help us magically surf our SEO or not, I still believe this is the fundament, fundamental thing that lots of SEOs, lots of sites are lacking. Like, have you also noticed that? And I still think it works right now, 2024, and keyword density, getting the keyword on the page in the right places. At least now it still works, in my opinion. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Well, my, mine would be, of course, <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, like you need to get basics, right? Um, and you mean, this is a starting game of SEO. And I agree that so many sites, whether small or big, they do omit those certain basic elements. So you don't need, as Rad said, you don't need to go crazy about it, you know, optimization, but, but you need to cover the basics, right? Because Google, in a sense, in the percentage of it, it's still all the same Google, all the same Google that we had a while ago, right? It, it goes through the links, it analyzes what it finds there. And obviously it's a lot more sophisticated set of algorithms now, but the basics are the basics and you need to optimize it to get into the game, as you said, Olga, 100% on this. Like, um, I, I, I can see a lot of sites don't do that. And this is, you know, we can carry on with this talking about internal links, right? Um, cause some people say, oh, you don't worry about internal links. Like if you have, you know, if the page is not orphaned then it's going to be all right, right. Someone's going to find it. Like Google's going to find it. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, but from the even user perspective, that's ridiculous. You know, if you have your pages so, so far away from the core or whatever, I mean, it all makes sense to, if you really think about it, right. It, it really makes sense to, to make it good for the user because ultimately you make it in most cases, at least, good for Google or for wh whichever search engine you, we talk about, right? Um, good, clear headings, you know, good, clean title, table of contents, matching images, actually answering the query in your <laughs> content, whatever that content would be. That's basics. And, but yeah, basics do work. That's why all, the audits are still very popular. We're supposed to be doing audits regularly to fix those, those things, right? So I fully, fully agree. I, I would that. say that we must be doing audits regularly. <laughs> yeah, 100%. We must. I, sorry, your focus, I, I kind of kicked in. You're, you're okay? Yeah, please do. You no, no worries, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's a dot on my sentence, so carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, earlier when we've been thinking about SEOs and how to stay up to date and how to you know catch up with all this madness related to AI and, and stuff, I just thought of and, and wrote down three rules that I would have for SEOs. Okay, first one is, and by the way, it leads to actually answering your question. So bear with me one second. My, my question first, was supposed to be, let's everyone, I want everyone to share like three tips, three rules. So we can, we can start with you now. <laughs> Okay, I'll circle back to, to the previous yeah, yeah. one in terms of the basics still. Uh -huh. okay. The punchline will be that anyway. So, so just, just bear with me. So my first rule for SEOs would be do not fall behind. Okay, because if you fall behind now, things are moving so quickly. You know, we all should start, try stay, to stay up to date. I don't mean to over exaggerate on this and you know follow all the smallest developments in the new language models or some ai tools and you know obsess about it but just don't become obsolete because when times are moving fast when technology is moving fast people tend to some people tend to get obsolete very quickly the second rule will be to think about the user and this is i can't i just can't stress enough how this, how important that is. In terms of what Rafael said earlier with regards to the content, when you're thinking about the user, 
you'll usually come up with good content if you're thinking about your target audience, which is in fact the user, you will come up with relevant content. You will most likely also come up with good keywords for that, but this isn't to say that you just need to disregard all keyword research and just don't worry about keywords, which I will uh, come back to um, in a second also with, in terms of the keywords. Uh, but the third rule is better do something basic than not do it before you're overthinking it. Okay. And I think that falls into what you said about basic basics uh, especially at the beginning that you know if you're worried about oh what is what is ai going to think about this or that or what is going to come from sg i mean the fact is we have no clue yeah. <laughs> uh, i don't think even barish words which who's who's meant to have some back doors to google i don't think he even knows right or maybe he does i don't know but i don't think so and um this is like a big secret no one knows what's going to happen with that no one knows what's going to happen with gemini uh no one knows what's going to happen with bart no one no one really knows what's going to happen with edgy so you know stick to the basics that you know work and if that happens worry about it then and essentially, just as a punchline, I would say that essentially our job as SEOs is and has always been to improve the website for the users, but also make it easy to crawl and index for search engines. If we wrap these up, we should be good. Um, and what I said earlier about the keywords, I've, I've seen so many SEOs um, in some previous companies and, and some friends also uh, they ask me for a consultation. I sometimes, you know, share my my time and knowledge with them, and I ask them, or oh, okay, so can you show me your keyword research, or what's your main keyword for that page that you're trying to target? And they don't know because they're thinking too much about the topic itself that they don't yeah. even try to select, you know, something as their northern uh, north star, which is, I think, personally. It can be okay in some cases, especially when you're targeting easier keywords, but if you're going after some hot call ones, it's like, you gotta know what you're working towards, right? Yeah, totally, totally. Okay, so I will share my three rules for 2024. So the first one Ladies is- Ladies and gentlemen, is the... Olga, <laughs> Olga Zar with her three rules for 2024. Yeah, exactly. So the first one is, like I said, make sure the basics are covered and and your your pages are actually tuned for what you want them to to rank for the second one would be give this human voice to your assuming that, like let's say i'm talking about my own site and where i want to seo my seo services i want this to be like a personal personalized experience i don't want to be like a faceless person there has to be this human element human person someone people can like with with whom they can make a connection so i think this is something that will help a lot of people websites stand out in the crowd of all those ai fakes so this branding personality and uh, something similar like keeping up with what's going on and making sure you actually use all those ai tools to your advantage to make you more productive better in seo and Raf, your three rules, things for SEO Only in three. 2024. <laughs> <clears throat> Only three? Right, right. He's a man Only of five. many words. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I am. Mm, right. You know, I would say plan, do, check, check, act. You need, you need just that, right? And what I'm seeing when I'm talking to people, whether business owners, SEOs, whoever, they very often do not plan that well. And then just like going after certain things. As you mentioned about, one of you mentioned about, you know, keywords targeting for individual articles or pages. Things are missing, right? So I think when you have more resources available, uh, but you have very fierce com uh, competitors and uh, really shaking landscape you need to plan very well right you, you plan for shorter time but do it like plan for shorter but do it right plan and then uh, do just do not overthink it you know you, you don't need to know 17 ai image generation tools to start generating your images for example right really uh 
you don't you just need one and that's it okay. right you pay five dollars to generate one good enough good enough do plan and do because you know when i said to someone once just plan person said or i'm gonna be planning and three months later she still yeah. we're, we're planning that so I, no 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 just uh, do not overthink it right you know your plan is not not good anymore because she seo shifted so plan do and then check meaning retrospect look back analyze what you've been doing right analyze the effects uh look at the landscape look at competitors look what you achieved where you are and there are so many different ways to retrospect the way you do things and the results right so we need to you need to do it 100 percent um and then repeat act again uh whatever uh whatever plan you had whatever results you achieved whatever you analyzed you need to look back and replan it and do it again and again and i think this is a very agile way of doing things even that sounds very sophisticated or difficult maybe or maybe not you tell me but what i'm saying is uh you need strategy you need to act on it you need to check it then you need to redo it again and over and over because this is the only way that you can adjust a very very um moving environment which is google organic or you know whatever whichever organic search we're talking about and this is yeah. what we follow <laughs> to be yes. honest very like good so we have yeah, nine okay. nine actionable tips. Yeah, sorry, Rad. What did you want to say? Yeah, I, I was just gonna say because you all just said mentioned earlier that you gotta re-audit the site frequently and you know come back and re-audit after a while. And this is exactly exactly showing that this is all a, a circular process. You just you just yeah. I'm not it's not to say that we're running in circles, but we follow <laughs> certain procedures that we should obviously have strategy for you know do analysis do the re-audit take um, um, conclusions act on the, do them like optimize do whatever create content whatever it, it involves then retrospect and just do do it all over again <laughs> yeah yeah um, i i had a question to you olga because you you mentioned something um about living persona and personalized experience for the content on the website so um i've been working with this i i used to work with this marketing department and this is also touching a, a little bit on what Rafael said so you had you have to plan and they've been planning six, uh, six months later so we've been talking about rewriting some content and they on their landing pages uh and they were so extremely focused on this personalized experience that it all turned into a total shit show pardon my french but they've been just overthinking it so badly and like focusing on all the wrong things and like you said, Rafael, six months later, we've still been at the same point. And I was like, look, guys, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> stop doing links because uh, you gotta do something on the side finally. And yeah, I, I had to dump this consultation client, actually, unfortunately, because we couldn't just work things out. And yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I had a similar situation like many times. So like where's the limit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely like you have to like you can spend some, I don't know, 10, 15, 30 percent of time like doing that, but at some point you have to say enough. We we have other things to do. It is similar to design when I see some people like obsessing, like this pixel has to be here, and they cannot have this site live without like that that stupid effect no one notices and it can slow like the entire process down of launching the site or whatever so this is also like this analysis paralysis obsession type of <laughs> <laughs> type of analysis, phase paralysis. which yeah so definitely <laughs> there has to be balance this is important yeah. but yeah like with everything balance <laughs> yeah be, be pragmatic about it <laughs> yeah so mm -hmm. and uh, because lack of it kills the agility. Yeah, totally, totally. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is like, yeah, a very like 
good, uh, I would say, ending that gives, uh, I hope, a lot of people uh, food for thought if they are like, uh, if they are prone to doing those things, because I know a ton of people can get stuck with with those things. So hopefully it will maybe let them think more about it. Okay, so any final like thoughts, concluding thoughts in addition to that? Like one sentence um, motto for, for, for listeners. <laughs> I, I would say, um, just following up on, on what you just said, don't obsess about things. There is this saying that goes something similar to better done than perfectly planned. Yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah. And uh, last sentence, don't worry about SG because we'll see what it is when it comes out and if. Yeah, my will be keep calm and do SEO. And Raf? <laughs> yeah, just say, you know, be brave, go into things, check, verify, don't be afraid. Or even if you are afraid, like, do not let fear dominate you. Whatever those gurus do say about AI, or ML, and whatever other acronyms that they have in their portfolio, I don't give a nothing about it, really. <laughs> uh, just go in, test it, like t test it, test it, do it, like do your own thing, right? You're an expert. If you're not expert enough, learn, like buy courses, go in into things. Because again, what we're thinking, what we're talking about here is just people either do not plan at all, or they plan too much. So as you said, Olga, balance, right? But yeah, don't be Get afraid. Me. Like, you know, the word is for brave people. Totally. Get your hands dirty with SEO stuff. Indeed, yeah. Okay, okay. So thank you both. <laughs> this was a very fun Cheers. episode. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it was, it was a, a pleasure. Blast. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. Nice Thanks. one. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. <laughs>